really, guys? What's up, guys? David Nerd 1, 2, and 2, and it's List Day! The last video I made was a user poll where I asked you guys what are some of the worst field spells in this game. Ryan and I compiled the list, crunched some numbers, and these are the ones you guys picked. I want to preface this list with two points. One, uh, there was probably 20 solid entries for this list, so if your card's not on here, it was probably on the other 10. And the second point is I did leave off all of the classic, like, first set of the game, second, maybe even the third set, field spells that are all just by type or attribute and offer an attack boost, and that's it. Mostly because those are so so out of date, so slow, and not good anymore that they could pretty much take up the whole list and that, that would just be really silly. We're not going to do that. Without further ado, let's get started. Number 10, Clock Tower Prison. Of all the hero field spells that aren't particularly relevant anymore, this one's probably the worst. And it starts a theme that you're going to see for the rest of this video. Counters. I don't know what Konami thinks is so good about counters, but anytime they want to make a lackluster field spell support for an archetype, give them a counter spell. And this thing is absolutely no exception. During each of your opponent's standby phases, you can put a clock counter on this stupid thing. Ugh. All right, right off the bat, that's annoying. You gotta wait for your opponent's turn to accrue any counters. It gets slower. When it's got four or more, you don't take battle damage. Hey, that's okay, I suppose. I mean, there's much, much better ways to do that. But okay, fine, what else does it do? If this card's destroyed with four more counters, you can summon Dreadmaster from your hand or deck. Now, the reason why this is at number 10 and not like two or three is because Dreadmaster is actually okay. He's not the best monster in the game. He's certainly pretty good for a D hero that's not malicious or diamond dude. So that's a thing, however, Again, he's really slow. Four turns is a nightmare. And sure, there is a trap card that you can use to, and I think a monster, that can put these clock counters on this thing. But you're using a trap, which is also really slow, so you're never gonna get this thing off. They're gonna destroy it, or remove it from the field when it's got three, or, you know, just not let you pop it with your own thing. The fact that you even have to pop it with a card that doesn't just get Dreadmaster when it hits four is just, even slower. It, ah, it's frustratingly clumsy. Realm of Light! <laughs> you know what Light Sworn needed? Counters. Haha! <laughs> anyway, what does this stupid thing do? Every time you mail a card from your deck to the graveyard, you can put a stupid little Light Sworn counter on this thing. And for every counter, your Light Sworn monsters gain 100 attack. And if this thing would be destroyed, let's say by your own Judgment Dragon, you can remove Two of those counters instead. Whoop de fucking do. That's exactly what Light Sworn needs. A really, really slow, moderate attack boost engine. What the what? Why do they need this? This doesn't do anything for their deck. This thing should like mill cards. It should you play this thing and then like mill three to do something. Like even if that was a, a bad effect, it wouldn't matter as long as this thing's point was to mill. It's light sworn. Why does this have counters? Uh, I mean, before I get frustrated, let's just, let's just keep going. Sargasso the DD Battlefield. Oh, thank God. There's, there's no counters on this one. Every time you see summon a monster, you take 500 damage. This applies to both players. And at the end of the turn, if you control an XC monster, you take 500 burn damage as well. Hey, it's like the worst anti-zoo card ever. Yeah, you're gonna you're gonna go down the daisy chain line and get that Dryden with like 80 material under it. I just burned you for like 2,000 damage. Yeah. And you know what? They might be at 6k life, but they just OTK'd you and you still lost. So there you go. I see what they're going for. They're trying to make you see something less desirable to do, but not actually completely shut it out entirely, because this came out in the middle of the XC era, so they didn't want to, like, you know, release a perfect counter to the mechanic they're trying to sell. In an attempt to, I don't know, placate the anti-black card people, so they're like, oh, look, we gave you anti xc support. It's it's really shitty, but it exists. Even before some weird zoo life equalizer FTK build with this stupid thing. That's you guys' mission. Build it. Sheehan's Castle of Mist. This is exactly what Six Sam needs 
a, a mediocre debuff. When you're a 6 Sam monsters battle an opponent's monster, your opponent's monster loses 500 attack during damage calculation only. Instead of just a permanent 500 debuff for, I don't know, let's say every 6 Sam you have, that would be cool. Being that that deck spams a lot of little monsters, being able to like take your opponent's monsters down with them and then like swing for a bunch of OTKs, yeah, this might have been neat. Or, I don't know, help protect Shein, your synchro monster that you're trying to make? Nope. Mediocre debuff during the damage calcs. Can't even like rag Nazero their monsters or anything cute. I'm pretty sure even in their heyday, they didn't play this. Neo Space. This one was actually kind of controversial, especially in the stream Monday when we were all talking about this with everyone who was watching. Because half the people were like, nah, Neo Space is a garbage deck. Every card in it's bad, so how could this not be on the list? And the other half were like, nah, they need this to play. Well, I'm I'm kind of in the first camp. Spoiler alert. What does it do? Elemental hero Neos and all of his fusion monsters that use him get 500 attack. What? <laughs> Uh, you know, if this was Duel Links, maybe. Ignoring that Neos is the big vanilla beater who's probably one of the least viable elemental heroes we have currently in the meta, that 500 attack boost ain't doing nothing. What else does this thing do? Well, during the end phase, all the crappy shuffle this card back into your extra deck effects that all the fusions have, they don't have to do that. This reminds me of that energy settlement machine thing for spirits that says they don't have to bounce the hand, or pandemonium for the original chess arch fiends that said they don't have to pay their life point maintenance costs. Neat, but not good. Hear me out. Konami decided to build an obscenely annoying mechanic into your deck for balance. In this case, the fusion monsters shuffling themselves back into the extra deck, and gave you an option in order to turn that balance off. That doesn't make Neo Space good, it just makes it necessary. Which, you know, frankly, is probably more annoying because you're forced to play a uh, make my deck suck less card as opposed to make my deck work card. It's like when you're playing tunes, you gotta use like Magic Reflector. Magic Reflector is terrible, but the fact that you absolutely can't let Toon World die and you need to play stupid crap like Magic Reflector just shows you how crippled the deck is based around a field spell like Neo Space that just lets it suck less. And that's ignoring the fact that like Neo Spatians in the, of themselves are a bad deck. Pure like fusion heroes and mass heroes and every other heroes ever has always been better. Coliseum Cage of the Gladiator Beasts. Oh, see? Hey, here you go, card design. Gladiator beasts are gladiators, so their field spells a Coliseum. Whoa, okay, yeah. Spoiler alert, we're back to the stupid counters. Each time a monster would be summoned from either player's deck, you can place a stupid counter on this card. Your glad beasts get like 100 attack for each one. whoop de fucking do And if this thing would be destroyed, you can like pitch another copy of itself from your hand. What? Your field spell having a self-protection ability is really cool. Waterfront uses one of its counters to save its life, which is what this should do. No, you have to discard a card from your hand. A specific card. This card. Thanks. That will never work. Unless I opened like two copies of Terraforming and my tan's totally bricked anyway. Yay. I can keep my field spell alive for a mediocre attack boost. I suppose Glad Beasts are a battle phase deck. So, you know, an attack boost makes some sense, but in order for them to really shine, this would need to be a much bigger boost. And frankly, you just play Moon Mirror Shield and just swing all your dreams away. Noble Knights of the Round Table. I feel really bad for Noble Knights. Like, they got the short end of the stick. Of all the TCG exclusive archetypes we've ever gotten, Noble Knights seems to get like the least amount of love. All their support came out way too far apart, so when you finally had the whole deck done, it was like way past its prime where it actually would have been super great. Instead, you were left with an already old, out of date, clunky deck based on equip spells. But hey, at least it's a neat theme, and given the right support, the deck might have still been able to shine. This was not that support. So why does this thing stink? During your end phase, you can activate each of these effects in sequence, depending on how many Noble Knights you control or in your graveyard. With three or more Noble Knights, you can pitch one from your deck to the grave. Which, okay, fine. So this card feeds into its own effect. All right. Six or more, you can special summon a Noble Knight from your hand and then equip a Noble Arms card 
from your hand during your end phase. The Noble Knight Equip spells do offer quite a bit of protection and various other effects to their monsters and their monsters gain effects when they have the equip spells. So it is kind of a helmety deck, so I can see why summoning a monster during your end phase isn't terrible. However, I would have really liked to do this in my main phase one so I could establish a board and go into a battle phase and actually do some damage as opposed to waiting to my next turn when my opponent's gonna have all the answers and then I'm gonna lose. 12 or more, you can draw a card. Hey, draw a power- wait, wait, one card? You have to have 12 different names now, I mind you. 12 different Noble Knights in your grave or on the field to draw one card during your end phase? Oh, great! That's one more card you're gonna have in your hand while you watch your opponent OTK you. Again, if these activated during your, like, main phase one or even your standby phase, they'd be okay. Ignoring the fact that 12 different names is probably every monster in your deck, so at this point, <laughs> you better have some serious graveyard resurrection because you got half your monsters or more in your graveyard right now. Ignoring all that, the card is just really clunky. It's a shame too because its three effects aren't actually that bad, especially in Noble Knights. It's just, again, during your end phase, really cripples the card. <laughs> LOL Watt Castle. I feel Watts get a lot of hate. I don't know why. They got cool artwork. It's like pop art or something. And they're a Thunder Archetype. There isn't a lot of those. So, neat. But with all the cool Thunder Archetypes like Battery Man and stuff, Watts are less. However, they're based on being able to attack directly, which is at least kind of neat. And given some right new support, hey, they might be able to actually get kind of sneaky. They could be a fun deck. And like Ties of the Brethren's always a good card in decks like this, because then you got like Denko Seka and, and Bro Hunter and all this other garbage. So yeah, maybe we should get some Watt stuff. The deck could be okay. But this is not the support we would want. Watt Castle, their field spell, bestows them the amazing ability. Any monster that attacks a Watt monster loses 1,000 attack after damage calculation. Now I'm going to let that sink in real quick, because at first it sounds like I then you realize it's that one little word. After damage calculation. After damage calc? What the hell is that? That means your monster's still getting killed, you still take the damage, and your monster's going to the graveyard. But hey, their monster lost a thousand attack power, they're not just gonna do anything to it main phase two. And mind you, it's their main phase two because the first part of this says when your monsters are attacked. So you can't even smash a Watt into something and have this lower its attack so then you can get over it with something else. Nope. No, it's on your opponent's turn. That's really clumsy. Unless your opponent's playing vanilla beatdown or they're an idiot, they're just gonna get rid of the Watt castle and then smash all over all your weak Watt guys. Or get rid of your Watts and just smash into your face. Either way, this thing is not really inhibiting your opponent from attacking you, which I think was kind of the idea because Watts are weaker monsters, but they attack directly. And it's also not helping you remove monsters because you can't do it on your turn. Ah! And it's really clumsy card design like this. It gets me really, really frustrated. So excuse me if my tone is a little scathing. The salt is real. Oh, the world day zone. Hey, did you know that aliens had a field spell? Yeah. And of all the stupid counter-based field spells, this somehow with an archetype that uses counters, that actually uses them in its other mechanics, it doesn't use them. Nope. It has a weird mediocre damage count battle attack thing. What? If your opponent's monster battles one of your aliens, it loses 300 attack during the damage calculation only. Why? What was the point of this? This doesn't do anything for aliens. Like I said, of all the field spells that should have something to do with counters, this isn't it. It's a mediocre battle protection. Hey, at least it says when it battles, which means that you can smash an alien into stuff this time around, unlike the Watt one, but it has nothing to do with the deck whatsoever. Uh, uh. I'm not going to go into this one anymore though. I'm just going to leave it there. The honorable mentions in this list are actually interesting cards. So that's a thing. And they weren't necessarily bad enough to be on the list, but they're bad given the decks they're for. 
First one up is Clear World. The effect's really long and the video is going to be like 80 minutes long if I go into all of them, but basically how it works is for every different attribute of monsters you control, you get some myriad of negative effects. For instance, if you have a, a fire monster, you take a thousand burn damage during the end phase. And if you have a light monster, you have to play with your hand reveal. All these effects are shitty. Most of the time, you would never want these to actually be applied to you, but to your opponent? Maybe. If your opponent's playing something like Bujins and you have this on board, they have to play with their hand reveal, which means you can see all their cranes. So you don't attack into one like an idiot. And this is pretty much why this card's not officially on the list, because it sucks for you, but it also sucks for your opponent. I have this weird feeling that there's gonna be a meta deck that has like one attribute that this thing applies to, and the effect that it applies to just happens to Shrek that deck, and this thing's gonna be a fantastic like tech card against it. It's got that weird kind of effect that it could happen. As it stands now, it's just kind of a weird oddity of the game, but I wouldn't say it's bad, just really strange. <laughs> this should all field spell. Do you guys know that should all set a field spell? I I forgot. Every time a should all monster goes to the graveyard, you can put a counter on this thing. Oh, we're back to that. And for every counter, your opponents receive a debuff in their attack. I'm I don't know what's with these counters, man. It's just what they do. But its last effect's actually kind of neat, and it's what kept it off the list. When you perform a fusion summon, you can burn three counters on this thing to use one of your opponent's monsters as appropriate fusion material for your El Shadal monster. You know, that's actually solid. That turns all your fusion spells into super poly, especially El Shadal fusion, being that that one's a quick play. That's like super disruptive, and this card's actually like really solid. I think the reason why the deck doesn't use it is because you have to have like three counters on this thing, which means your plays are already kind of working, your deck's already doing things, and if you need that, like, monster removal to, like, get rid of something, like a, like, a, I don't know, like a, a crystal wing or something, <laughs> so you're going to Windigo, it's not going to let you, because it isn't the first thing you have to do, it's like the last thing you get to do. So it's clumsy and it's slow, but it's not bad. It's just, you wouldn't run it necessarily. Oh, number one was like one of the hardest ones to pick because a lot of these are really crappy and it's really hard to say which one is worse than the others. But I picked the Nordic Lights. Now, the Nordic Lights has a very simple effect. Your Nordic monsters can't be killed by battle. Hey, that's not too bad. Except when you consider the fact that their two main searchers are both battle tutors. So your field spells flying in the face of like your only way of getting at the other stuff in your deck. Ooh. That clumsy synergy, though. But that affects not what would keep this on the list. This would just mean the card wouldn't get played. No, what puts it on the list is the last effect. If this thing's destroyed, you nuke your board. You kill all your monsters. Or at the very least, all the Nordic monsters on the field. I guess you could play this against Nordics. Basically meaning that if your opponent has MST, it turns it into Regeki. That's so annoying. At least something with like Fire King Island, it's played in a deck that benefits from its crap getting blown up. The Nordic Searchers don't. They have to be killed by battle, not card effects. So you can't like get some weird combo out of this with like a, like a Twin Twister or Parallel Twister or something. Nope, you just nuke your board. And you don't even get a cool protection for your Ace Tier monsters like in lieu of this or something. Nah. I think the worst part about this card is it's really bad and it's in a deck that desperately needs something in order to play and be okay. And this is like a, a laugh in the face. All right, guys, that was the list. This one was a lot of fun because a lot of these cards are just so bad. Let me know in the comments below what you guys think and let me know what your list would be because, like I said, there was, there was 10, 15 other cards that couldn't make the cut, but they were all pretty lousy. And remember, guys, if you don't troll the meta, who will? I'll see you guys next time. Wait just a moment. I can see you were about to click the subscribe button. Was I right? Tell me I was right. I was right, right? My Millennium Eye lets me see everything, including these other videos by Davy Boy. Don't be a stranger. You will always be welcome in my Toon World.